this is kind of a serious topic here. And uh, as we look forward uh, to the NFL draft and, but top prospect, uh, he's a defensive tackle, Jalen Carter. He's one of the top prospects in the 2023 draft. The University of Georgia, and Andy, he's the subject of an arrest warrant in Athens, Georgia, on reckless driving and racing charges as a result of an ongoing investigation into a fatal car crash on January 15th. That's according to the police down there. Both charges are misdemeanors. Police say their investigation found that Carter, who's 21, and another person who is uh, were operating vehicles in a manner consistent with racing after leaving downtown Athens around 2.30 a.m. And uh, so they're looking for him. But the story is he's a top pick. Carter is in Indianapolis at the NFL scouting combine. And uh, here we go. The guy's a first-team All-American all SEC player for the Bulldogs in 2022. Carter played in 13 games uh, with nine starts. And uh, as a junior, Andy, for the eventual national championships, he's currently the number one player on the NFL uh, draft analyst Daniel um, Jeremiah's list of the top 50 prospects. So, Andy, put on your general manager hat. Does this affect his draft status or where he goes? Um, or is this a young kid doing something reckless, not the end of the world, and you got to make sure that he's going to mature up and grow up and, and you know, and, and handle himself in a more professional well, way? Where are you on this? Number one, it's reckless driving and racing in connection with a crash, and the crash killed a teammate and a recruiting staff member. So there's a death involved. But here's the thing. Well, they I've say always they're felt, misdemeanors, right? That's the thing that I saw. Uh, misdemeanors in, in the state of Georgia, right? Right. Uh, I've always followed this this symbol: T T T. Talent trumps trouble. He will be drafted. He'll play. It'll be no big whoop. All right. It is a big whoop, but he'll play. We saw the same thing the other day with the kid Brandon Miller, the basketball player. I have no idea what I would have done as a coach. Do you sit him down? Do you suspend him? Do you throw him out of school? Well, Some I was embarrassed. Can't believe he's playing, right? Right. Well, you know, I'm more upset with not what he did because, again, he's a kid and did something stupid. I, I can't believe that the coach and or athletic director or the president of the university didn't have the hangy downs to come out and say, look, don't embarrass my school. That's the problem that I have. Where was the president? That's all I've got to ask, right? Yep. And here's the other thing, too. And you know, because you're in Cincinnati and Joe Mixon had an incident when he was in college that we saw, Andy, on yeah. videotape. He's got one now pending. And he has another. This is new. Yeah. What's the talk on that one? You know, Mixon. they're reevaluating it. Uh, some people are claiming that. Because he's a high-profile athlete, he's going to get away with it. Uh, the woman said that he took out a gun, uh, threatened her uh, the day before they were going to Buffalo to play a game in, in the playoffs. Right. Uh, and right now it's just laying there. I mean, we'll see what happens. But I think this is a great excuse for the Bengals to unload him because you can get a running back in the sixth round and save that money and use it to pay off Joe Burrow, who's up for a contract. No, and it did. But they'll it, save but nineteen million. Nineteen million though, dollars, I'll say. And even though we saw the videotape with Joe Mixon, the Bengals still took a chance on him. And he was nothing but thought. a complete gentleman since he's been here, really, right. except for this incident. So you don't think that this is going to affect Carter? Do you still believe him? I mean, uh, on and this is of course one person's draft board who has him number one. I see, I see a draft board today. I, th I think it was on CBS Sports. He was a uh, 17th pick in the first round with the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, you're gonna have you're gonna have a lot of people who want to make themselves look good. Like, you know, I'm not gonna take him. I think he needs to get counseling, all that stuff. But there's also gonna be the other side of the coin where you're gonna get general managers and personnel people and coaches saying, "I want to take a chance with him. I could mold him. I could change him." You get all those people who think that they could they could make a difference, and and some people can make a difference. But this is a pretty serious deal. It really is, and and I, I'm not going to say you're not going to take a chance with him. He did something stupid. It's not like he had a knife or a gun. He was racing a car. That's that's what he did. And and he did release a statement, Jalen Carter saying, "quote 
that there is no question in my mind that when all the facts are known, that I will be fully exonerated of any criminal wrongdoing. So that's his end quote. That's his take on the situation and what's happened and with the police there. So so what is he going to get, a speeding violation? Is that what he's saying? It's a crash that killed a teammate and a recruiting staff member, and he was racing. You know, there is an arrest warrant for him. But again, you know, he probably will walk away scot free. He's not going to go to jail. Maybe pick the fine, maybe. But but what 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 but what, but in the, what in, lesson in sports, does that teach? I, I get it, but you also know this, Andy, and this is just the reality of where we are in life. If he was a bench player or a scrub or a guy who wasn't going to be drafted. He'd be in hot water, wouldn't he? There's no doubt. Well, you saw that with the Miller kid uh, in, in basketball. You know, his teammate, who was involved to some extent with the situation with the gun incident, you know, he averaged right. 22 seconds a game. He was thrown off the team, okay? Miller's a first-round draft pick, a lottery pick in the draft. He, you know, he's a great way for me to win as coach. He's staying. He's playing. Right, and that and that's what I'm saying. It is definitely – a different. We don't know the the all the information. No one's saying that he's guilty or whatever. We're not a court of law. We're not the police. We're just reading what is being reported. So I want people to. We're not jumping on him saying he did something. We weren't there, Andy. Uh, but there's a. But the facts remain that there's a police warrant for him. That, right. Those are facts. You know, timing those is everything. Those aren't feelings. With this incident right now, I'm not going to say it's going to change his life tremendously, but should he fall in the draft and maybe second or third round, that's a lot of money to lose. But you would think someone would get a hold of a coach, a parent, a friend, say, look, you got the draft down the road. You got the the, uh, the combine you this week. You got to keep your nose clean. Stay you home. Be careful, right? Yeah, stay, stay in the stay library. Home. Let, they stay. Rub, let them wrap right. you up in bubble wrap for uh, exactly. the next month or two, right? Until we get to the draft. Just stay home. Don't do anything. It's amazing. I, you would, and you know what? It happens over and over it and does. over again. It has and, and, happened a ton of times. And you, I'm with you, Andy. Like, where are your friends? Not your yes man friends. But well, Andy, they'll be there when he signs friends. the contract. You know, yeah. the hanger ons will be there when he gets the money. That's for sure. But but you should have friends who tell you, you know, to to look out for yourself and to be careful. I can remember Andy growing up, and my friends and and some guys would be like. They knew I was in college and I had these big goals and dreams. And they would go to get into some mischief. Not not anything terrible, but mischief, right? Yeah. And guess what they would say to me, Andy? Hey, Rob, we're going out. You can't go. That's what they would. Are That's those friends? Nice, though. Those are friends. Those Andy. are friends, right. You know, I, I go back to a situation, and you remember the late Skip Prosser when he coached at Xavier University in Cincinnati. Sure. You know, two of two of his ball players got into a bar fight the night before an NCAA champion NCAA playoff game against Georgetown way back in the day. What did he do? He benched them. They didn't play. You know, I think everybody has morals. You have to look at yourself in the mirror. That's what you have to do. Skip Prosser was an upfront kind of guy. You know, winning was important, but you know, teaching morals may be more important than winning. Those are out and the he, window. You know that. Well, yeah, we we right. don't live in that world anymore. Because okay, but if Bob Knight was coaching. The kid in in in, uh, in Alabama, not only would he be off the team, he'd be out of school. Yeah, Bobby Knight. But, Bobby Knight had his own issues. Let's just be honest. There's no uh, doubt. But but I will say this: you, you're exactly right. Because in this day and age, if a coach does something like that and sits him down, you know what the player says, "Screw you! I'm going in the portal, and I'm not playing for you next year." And you might have a hard time recruiting other players, as you right. know. Right. I mean, that's just the reality of where we are. Uh, this is an interesting case. And, and, you know, again, a warrant for his arrest, misdemeanor charges. He says uh, in a statement that he's going to be fully exonerated when all the facts come out of what happened. And as we said, uh, it was fatality. It, w- it was a, a, f- a fatal car crash. Um, so it, it was very serious. But um, if you're an NFL guy, NFL scout or team or owner, it would be interesting to see if it affects anything. All right. We want to hear from you. David in Washington, you're on The Odd Couple, right here on Fox Sports Radio. Hello, David. Hey, Rob. Really appreciate the opportunity to chat here. And uh, I got to say, you know, as a Seahawks fan, I really hope and pray this allows Jalen Carter to fall to number five because what are we talking about here? This kid was allegedly racing somebody who was driving an Escalade going 80 miles an hour who crashed and going, don't get me wrong, 
I am very heartbroken for the two people who lost their lives and their family members that are dealing with that. But we're talking about a young man on the night of the celebration after winning the championship who allegedly was racing, and the other car crashed. Other than the other stuff we don't know about, maybe he's on the do not do not draft list like Aaron Hernandez. No, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm just. I didn't say he was on that list. I'm just saying that in years gone by, I never knew there was such a list. And I just remember Tony right. Dungy bringing it up, saying that Aaron Hernandez was on their do not draft list. That, that's all I remember. And we don't know the entire situation yet. We no, don't know if drugs says, or alcohol may have been involved with this, too. He, he says he's going to be exonerated. So, we'll I see. mean, th- th- that's the quote from Carter, the statement. Well, we'll see exactly Eight, what happens. Eight seven seven ninety nine on Fox. Ted in Georgia, you're on The Odd Couple, right here on Fox Sports Radio. Hello, Ted. Hello, fellas. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing great. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you asking. Um, to answer the question, if I was a GM, I would still draft Jalen Carter, uh, but I wouldn't spend a first-round pick on him. And I think there are two names that kind of come into mind that would have set my, my thinking. Uh, okay. I know it's not the exact situation as Henry Ruggs, but I think just showing that type of decision-making with driving, knowing you're about to get the biggest payday in your life, might scare off some GMs. And then there's another name that pops up, too, that kind of reminds me of Jalen Carter, and I'm a Georgia fan. Um, there was this guy that played at Ole Miss about six years ago. His name was Robert Incondici. He was an all-world talent, was supposed to be um, drafted in the top ten. And right before the draft, something about he smoked some marijuana and he fell out of a window. Um, and he fell all the way to the first round, uh, the bottom of the first round, and now he's out of the league. Um, I just wonder if, you know, that super talented guy but that hasn't shown that type of motor and that type of decision-making, I don't know if I would waste the first rounder on him, but he's so talented I know somebody's going to draft him. But you can't take that chance because you say you're not going to draft him in the first round. He may be gone in the first round by somebody else. Right. No, that's, that's true. And, 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 you know, uh, and thanks for the call. We appreciate it. And you know, it's hard as as people want talent. It's you're not putting together a boys' choir, and I'm just right. being honest with you, right? And everybody's the, job is on the line. You know, if I'm the GM, if I'm the head coach, I'm telling the GM draft this kid. I'll straighten him out. You know, well that that's the word because right. you know he could help you win. Or, that's basically you, it. Or, or you you believe people deserve second chances, right? And yeah. you're gonna say and most people do. Yeah, the the kid uh, was, you know quote-unquote reckless or just not thinking straight. A uh, young kid made a mistake. He can rebound from that. People make mistakes, Andy. You know and what? I'm, I'm glad up. you brought that up. And I know we got some calls. Let me hold for a second because everybody gets a second chance in life except Tom Brenneman. That's all I'm going to say, okay? He was doing football games at Fox, and he was doing the Reds games locally in Cincinnati, and he had a slip of the tongue. It was a, an ugly remark he made. He apologized 10 million times. It was an open mic. He can't get a gig, okay? But if you wear a uniform, you get a second chance, all right? That's basically it, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I, I don't think that Tom Brenneman will never get another chance. It just hasn't happened yet because guys get second chances. It just, has, it just I, doesn't always happen. No, I know. I'm, I know Tom Brennerman as well. You know, and and uh, from Cincinnati, and I know him. Uh, and and I think Andy, I'm not convinced he'll never get another opportunity. Trevor Bauer will be pitching in the major leagues again. Yeah. you know that, he right? Will. Don't you? Right. Okay. Well, he's not on nobody's team now. He's he's available to play. So it doesn't always happen when you want it. But that doesn't mean that Tom Brennerman. Or Trevor Bauer, or guys like that won't. Or get the former chances. Celtic coach, he'll he'll be coaching again. He will. He'll get another job. He will. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't. Go. You're exactly right. There we go. Andre in Massachusetts, you're on the Odd Couple, right here on Fox Sports Radio. Hello, Andre. How you doing? Thanks for taking the call. Listen, for me, it's not about the second chance. It's about the 200th chance, and that's what we do. Arnie, you're 100 percent right with this talent trumps um, uh, talent trumps everything uh, that, Trouble. that you said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then that's why I have such an issue with this. First of all, how are you driving recklessly, racing, to the point where two people die and it's a misdemeanor? All right? I don't understand that. So this young man is adamant that he's innocent. I need to see how this case is adjudicated. But I wouldn't draft him at number one. Here's the reason why. We say that people are going to change. Yeah, Mike Tyson was supposed to change too after he came up out of the leadership of Teddy Atlas. Okay, And what happened? 
He continues to do what he had been doing before because he was never disciplined. He was never held accountable. He never had real guidance, okay? And so down the road, you're going to continue to have these things happen. We see what happened with Ruggs. Uh, again, a kid out of Alabama. Here, here's my real issue. These colleges are professional teams masquerading as institutions of learning. And there's no Arnie, doubt about that, point, Andre. There's no doubt about it. What your point goes to, there's nev- you, it, 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 in their mind, they realize that they can't be disciplined. Why can't they be disciplined? Because the university president won't look Nick Saban in the eye. Because Nick Saban makes 10 times his salary that the university is dependent on. And the right. issue at, at root is if you feel that you cannot be disciplined, that you are above the law, then you're just going to continue to be reckless until you do something so incendiary, so incendiary like Harvey Weinstein, finally held accountable, and then all the pieces come uh, tumbling down. That's why I have an issue with this and the same thing with the Alabama. Nate Oates, uh, again, Alabama, you, him being so tone deaf to this situation and them doing their little routine, oh, it's MMA. But you just are in the news for a murder. you got to – that's – the kids, they don't, they're not going to change and it's until something – really out of bounds, you know, so far off the reservation, and then it just comes tumbling down. That's how I think these things go. Thanks for taking the call. Well said. Well Appreciate said. Appreciate it. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah.